Hello everybody, Dr. Incompetent here, getting ready to resume this Let's Play Planet Zoo franchise mode here in 2020, and I think our mandrills are doing okay in their initial habitat. Uh, we do need maybe some more females to fill out the social uh, situation a little better. And so I think we should look into that. So let's go to animal trading. We have plenty of cash. We've got 16,000. Um, and yeah, here's some nice, um, well, let me look at you. This one is, it's interesting. Um, she's way older, but her genes are unreal. So let's go ahead and adopt her and then move her right in. Now I don't, quite know enough yet about the game to understand if um you know with appeal like it just stacks so all of the appeal for all of the animals inside a habitat accumulates and adds up to bring in more guests or if it's kind of um capped on either the highest appeal animal in that habitat or there's a cap per habitat i don't rightly know the answer to that um but anyway, I don't know if that's something we have to worry about too much. Now, here come our first guests. So what you can do, just like the animals, is you can click on a guest and just kind of see what's going on. Now, they haven't really had time to do anything. Um, they're heading, you can see where they're going to go. They're going to Mandrill Madness, our little habitat, our only habitat. Um, they're pretty happy right now. They're hungry already. Um, they have good energy. So there are th several things that we need to add that meet all of these needs. Education is something that's very, very difficult to get your head around as a new player and me in general, but um, just be patient with education. I haven't built any educational resources, so of course education is going to be low, but until you really take time with your vets to research the animal you're not going to get the education that you are looking for so just be aware that that's going to be probably the slowest of the guests needs to rise and even within your zoo reputation um guest education rating is difficult to get up there conservation rating is very hard at the beginning too because you're not really releasing animals into the wild uh <laughs> at this stage of your zoo's career. But anyway, now it's time to meet the guest needs. So what we want to do is go to facilities and let's go to guest facilities. Okay, so what do these people want? Well, they need to eat. They need to go to the bathroom. They need to drink. They need to be educated. So um, again, to save money, well, how much is a toilet? Ah, you know what? Um, I might actually, in some of these cases, just buy um, some of these more expensive uh, features. No, no, I'm not going to do that. I will buy the nicer toilet because it's only $165 more. Um, so let's just put a potty in. But what I like to put in um, is a soda, a chief beef, a gulpy soda, an information center. Uh, you don't really have to build this loony balloons right away. Um, it's a little shop where they can buy balloons. Um, but we need to kind of be patient. So let's just buy the essentials, all right? So... Remember, we need to build this within our power zone. And I think kind of right here would be a good place to build it, block the view of the staff facilities. Um, so we can put a uh, gulpy soda here so people can, like, you know, go get a drink. And then right next door, we can build a chief beef. <laughs> I love that, that it says that. And then um, we can then also throw in a toilet 
And I'm going to build this cool looking toilet because it's just... Look how nice that looks. Who wouldn't want to go to the bathroom there? Um, okay. And then... Those facilities should do us really well. An, an information center is quite outstanding, but I'm going to wait till I get some more money to build that. Now, we need to make money, right? And so one of the key things for making money are these donation boxes. And you kind of want to put one at every viewpoint. And I'm right now considering a viewpoint to just be this big glass window. Um, so I'm putting donation boxes almost at every post uh, to try to encourage people to give us their dough. You can also put them around like when they're leaving the zoo. You know, you don't want to be tacky about it, but you want their money. Um, so... I'm just going to build a few just to make sure we don't lose it. Um, I will build an ATM just in case people are like, hey, I need a little cash. Put that there. Um, now we're down to 7,000, so we're getting kind of sparse on our money. What is this small shop? Can I put this? Oh, okay, great. So I can actually build this shell over top of, you know, the, the basic structure that I've built this box so I can just kind of put this skin on the outside of it right um, I don't know if it just snaps on there um, if there's a way to just be like hey can you just kind of go on the place or I just have to really line this up I guess I need to line it up so let me make sure I'm doing this correctly so that it looks really good now again this is probably a bad idea because I don't have very much money but look how good it looks so, just line this up with the... Alright. So, how does that do? Looks like it went over top great. And then, I'm going to build one more facility. I'm going to build, like, this other one. And they kind of connect. They're going to overlap a little bit, because I built them so close together, unfortunately. Um, but that's okay. Alright. So... It actually, they actually look fine overlapping. It's like they're the grooves um, on the roofs, uh, the roof here just connect. So now I've got some really good looking shops. Now if I go to zoo and I go to staff, you'll see that when you build um, shops, automatically they, they give you a vendor to go in there. So you don't need to hire vendors independently. Now, I'm going to just assign them to the entry of zoo work zone. However, if you go to zoo, you'll see if I go to the work zone um, and I click on this um, and I say edit work zone. Um, these three buildings are not in the work zone because they weren't there when I established it and neither is the ATM. So what you can do is just kind of hold down um, shift and just click on the buildings that you want to include. And now once they're green, they're in your work zone and then you're like cool and you just close it and you can close it and then now you've got the work zone so now we have a place to eat a place to drink and a place to go to the bathroom and then I'm gonna build actually um, some places to sit down so you can go into um, guest facilities bins benches and security all right and I'm gonna build uh, just some cool these are the Planet Zoo benches. These are the... Which bench looks best with... Um... Can I change the, anything about them? The color of them? Oh, yeah. The the Planks color, yeah. I'd like to make it um, a really, really dark brown like that. No, that's too scary. Um, I meant more like... Not a reddish brown, like a... Interesting. I didn't mean to make it red. I was going for just brown. Um, oh, here we go. It's showing you a preview of it here. Okay, that's w very helpful. Um, that's not bad. Uh, actually, that's okay. Yeah, I think that this looks fine. 
I'm being really ridiculous, by the way. Um, like, but this is how cool the game is that you can like adjust all of these features. So I could just, you know, have the painted iron be white if I wanted, um, or like silver or something. And then I can be like, hey, it will look like that. Or what I can do is change the color. I can just completely change um, this and then go over here and then or what I could do is um, I could make like some fun no we don't need to make it fun uh, All right, let's just reset it. This is what it would look like normally. Um, yeah, I think this is fine. So maybe we just build like a bench here and here, and then we can build one kind of over here and over here for now, just for if people need to sit down. They don't usually need to, but at, at this early stage in the zoo, let's just go ahead and throw in some some trash cans and some recycling places so that we don't have a trash problem. Um, but I'm gonna need to see how that unfolds. All right, now we are at the point where we've got about six grand left. Um, do we wanna build education facilities? They're not that expensive, so let's just do it. So what you wanna do when you're building an education facility, um, or not really facility, just feature, is um, figure out the best place for these things. Now, by the way, I'm pushing X when you put something down. If you're placing something, you can push X and you can do all these different things. Like you can raise it up or lower it. Um, and then you can uh, move it to the left or to the right or whatever. Uh, that actually looks okay. I kind of want to lower it. Okay, and then you can push X again and you can rotate it if you'd like. But I think at this point, um, I'm okay with this. So you just click the check mark and then it's in there. Now, um, you might ask yourself, well, what does this thing do? Um, it's actually just a stand, uh, but it has a TV on it. Um, and so what you can do, and you have to do this to get the education, is you have to click educational content and then click mandrill and then you'll see now it's telling the guest information about the mandrill this number in the lower right corner is saying i'm only at level one knowledge about mandrills because i haven't um done very much research so it's not super helpful but you need to have these to get any kind of education rating additionally you want to have these speakers these speakers um will give people information about the animals. And watch this. So you click Mandrill, okay? And then what you can do is, you can go to your heat map and then it'll default to education because that's what we're building. And this blue circle is the range that this speaker is broadcasting. So any guest that steps in here is hearing info about the Mandrill. Now I'm actually gonna turn up the volume to spread this, I mean, I could like, you know, get nuts and have it be really loud and spread out all the way around here. Um, that's actually not bad. I mean, maybe later I would want to reduce it. Um, or you could just be reasonable and just kind of like put it at, you know, at six or whatever. And then where's this one? Um, if I turn this guy on, right, you don't want them... But the, the main thing is you don't want them to overlap because if you start having them overlap, then it creates this red zone and it's negative um, experience for guests if they step into that death zone. Um, so I think maybe doing something like this is just fine for now. Uh, let me, if I, can I pump this up one more? 
or is it going to overlap? No, it overlaps. Okay. Um, so now guests coming over here will get educated by these speakers. And let's just put some other speakers in. So did anybody walking by will hear about the mandrill and we'll get some kind of credit for education. Let me open up the heat map by pushing H and you can see that by default, these are indeed overlapping. So what we need to do is just kind of decrease the volume down to like four on each one and we should be good. There we go. Um, now we're missing any guests who step here or here are not hearing it. So maybe we want to put a speaker like right here and one right here. And then um, when I click on this, you can see that it, it costs no power to run. So it doesn't have an upkeep cost, really. The issue is just us making sure that we aren't overlapping. Oh, man, this one overlaps really badly with the guy next to it. Uh, so I might have to turn this one down. Now, um, no, it still overlaps. It's maybe just a bad location. All right, that's good. Well, in that case, then let's turn this one up to about like this. There we go. Now we have pretty good coverage. And I think I could benefit from putting maybe one habitat information screen over here so people can see it. Uh, so I'm gonna just push XX, rotate this screen. And then um, X again, and I'm just going to hold the blue arrow, slide it backward to here. Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess it has to be kind of high up so people can see it. All right. Yeah, that's fine. And then let's turn this on. Okay. So I think that's pretty good education. You know, if I go over here, it's... My education rating is not going to uh, change at all because the guests need to experience the education. So I'm going to actually unpause it and just kind of see what happens at this point. Um, now we're getting more guests. We are going up to 50 and people are paying money to get in. Oops, actually, let me pause the game. When you go to your zoo and you go to zoo overview, you can see right here, here's your ticket prices. Um... A guy I watch, Paulsley, who makes videos on this, says that you can just go ahead and set this right away to $5, and people will not mind, and you will get more money right in the beginning. But to be honest, I, from what I understand, the way you make the most money is through these donation boxes anyway. But let's just do it like this and see what happens. All right, here come the people. The zoo inspector is coming in 23 minutes, so that's always something to look out for all right and then this dude just got a big box of something is this like another animal it is cool so now all of our animals are in here and um, they're pretty happy maybe this exhibit is a little bit tight um, and for all of these animals, we'll see what they think about it. All right, so now look how many people we've got. We're up to like 159 people, and we are slowly starting to make some money. People are also actually buying stuff, all right? So like you can see, you can just click on a shop. Um, unfortunately, you have to kind of click inside it because of the exterior, but it's a chief beef, and um, we can increase the appeal by boosting the scenery around it. It's made 68 bucks so far. Seven people have come to buy here. Norma Willingham is employed. Um, we can adjust the prices if we want. Um, no unhappy customers. So this is all pretty reasonable so far. Let's take a look at some of our guests and just get a sense of how they feel about it. Um, the 8% education, not great, not horrible. Um, what is he thinking? He's saying the ticket price is great. It was a good value. The zoo is clean. You know, all of their opinions are pretty good. 
Now they're not going to stay very long, unfortunately, because all I have is this one exhibit, but that's just, you know, how the game starts up. Now I'm push P just to kind of, I'm letting it run at normal speed just to see how people move around and they're going to all the different areas. Uh oh, an animal has escaped. Okay, where? All right, so they, um, this animal was able to maybe climb up and over the wall. Um, so I'm going to call the vet to come move this, and I'm going to need to raise this barrier. I was worried about that. So let's edit the barrier. Um, and it's funny, well, he just escaped into another habitat, so that's okay. Uh, I'm going to raise this up to like, you know, almost six meters and see if that does the trick. All right, so let's unpause it and watch what happens when the vet comes to take down this animal. People are running away terrified, unfortunately. I know, I, I've called the vet. Oh no, he just climbed up and over the wall like it was a joke. Um, okay, so it didn't matter how tall it was. All right, so this is a problem with the construction of the zoo. And let's see, I need to... Um, there's something I can do to edit the barrier so that they can't climb over it. Yes, I need to make it climb-proof um, on the right side. Okay, so I think maybe this will do it. Uh, and it wasn't even an issue of it not being tall enough. It was just an issue of um, me not having the proper climb proof protection on the barrier. Can I do it? But yeah, you can't do it on the glass. So that's kind of scary. So, but the, I don't think they can climb to get the glass. I think it's just an issue that they can climb. Um, the uh, wooden stuff. So maybe this will, hopefully this does it. So let's see if now the, um, all of our guests have fled in terror. And then did we get the new animal yet? Did we get the animal? What the vet does is it's pretty hilarious. They come and they use like a tranquilizer dart on the animal and then they take it down. Um, let's look and see if it's in storage. It's not in my stored animals. So let me look inside the habitat and then just go to the animals tab and see who's in here. Yeah, he escaped, but then he got climbed back in. He was like, I'm happier in my little base. Um, okay. So now he's going to go up the tree and let's just keep an eyeball on them while they're in the tree and see he's up here chilling, just being an awesome dude. But let's just make sure there's no monkey business get it see what i did and he can climb out i don't think he can i think we're good now okay that was pretty funny so i raised this barrier just to be sure like i didn't want him to get here and jump over or something so i think we're climb proof now all right so people are seem pretty happy What do you think, dude? Oh, he just threw a bunch of money into the bucket. This zoo is pretty small. Um, the ticket price is fair. Yeah, this, I mean, it's not a big zoo. I mean, what do you want? We just started out. Um, so you can really tell they put a lot of thought into the planning because we have a good view. And that's the thing. When I built a habitat that was too big, the problem was they couldn't get a good view because the animal would just be too far away. So while this space might be a little bit too tight it does provide a really excellent view how do you feel um education is terrible um but you know what can we say he's going to eat at the chief beef and look we've already made up to almost eight thousand. so another way that we can boost our education is by building a guest facility and building a um, information center so I am going to put in an information center. Let me look at the heat map and just make sure that we've got power if I build it like over here. Great. Okay, I'm going to build it over here. I'm going to rotate it. Um, I'm going to push Z just to kind of spin it on its axis and just put the information center 
right there. Now we are we have hired another person to work here, but now people can come and get even more education. And look, they're like immediately going over there. They cannot wait. Um, fantastic. I am going to be just ridiculous and build this on top of it because I think these look awesome. So I'm just going to rotate this and just kind of get close so I can line this up properly. Looks pretty good. Did we get it on there? Yeah. That's fantastic. Look how nice that looks. All right. So we're up to 212 guests. Um, and the education rating, we are actually starting to build it just a little bit. All right. This guy's coming in with his vacuum cleaner to clean up the poop. You know, the vital services. All right. Let's check in on the animals. How are you guys doing? Um, you're doing pretty good. Uh, what is the habitat problem? It's the hard shelter. It's just not big enough for everybody. So then, you know what? Um, I'm going to build... Uh, no, 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 no. I'm sorry. Habitat. And we're going to build another hard shelter. Can I build one like that's a little bit smaller and it's just back here? Now, I don't know if that's going to actually help or not, but... Maybe now there's enough places for everybody to sleep. Your zoo has no security cards to deal with crime. It doesn't, but I don't know if that's a huge issue um, early in the progress of the zoo. But you know what? Let's at least... I'll hire one. I'll hire a security guard, sure. So this dude will, like, or woman will patrol. Who is this? It's uh, Gabrielle Torres, and she's going to be security. So she's going around and cracking skulls for us. Okay. So now what you can do, once you start making a little bit of money and your zoo is stable, all you really want to do is just make sure it's stable. And it was obviously unstable because animals could escape, so we had to fix that problem. But now we have pretty much most of the guest services taken care of. They've, they're queuing up and eating. They've got potties. They've got trash cans. They've got donation bins. Um, what do you think? How do I get to the mandrel? It's good. I'm thirsty. I need to pee. Well, luckily, all this stuff is right by you, so you should be good. What about you? How are you doing, dude? Um, your nutrition. Um, I need to give them... So you can open this up and see, like, their last meal quality was moderate, meaning that I need to give them better food. Um, now I can do that by clicking on the habitat itself and then going over here to um, animals and then you can change the food quality but you have to research it first so if you go to the zoo menu um, you can see what people are researching in the research tab Oop, and we just finished great we unlocked level 2 for the mandrill let's see what we got we got food, better food, better toy enrichment, perfect. So now what we can do, I think it defaults, but let me just check it and go to animals and let's up them to grade two food quality. All right, so now eventually once they get fed again, they should become happier because they've got more food. This dude is up in the tree, just being awesome. Let's see if anybody's gonna mate. All right, so now their last meal quality is way better. So their welfare is awesome. It's like 93%. Um, social group is balanced. Maybe they want one more female in there. Now I'm back over 10,000. So at this point, what I like to do is click nature. And I click on um, filters and I say, well, I'm in this kind of grassland in Africa. So what kind of, uh, you know, nature can I put in that is appropriate? And so I'm going to put in some just plants and things to make it look good. This tree looks pretty sweet. Oh, 
look at this they're about to mate see now that's what we're talking about that's what we want which is um a baby because babies generate insanely high appeal all right let's see let's look at some other trees that we can throw in yeah that looks pretty nice put one right there um and then you know we can line the the path as people come in with this tree and then let's see what are these reeds these look all right we could put this like right here and right here kind of around this see and so you can just um decorate as you wish i'm gonna look for maybe a smaller kind of bush african daisies these sound awesome yes please yes look how sweet these things look i'm gonna get close and just throw in some daisies just all over the place because um i think they look great i don't want to spend too much money but um, i really like taking the extra time to make the zoo look nice so we've got daisies happening um and we can even put some you know by the habitat itself cover up the legs of this ugly display board okay and then what other flowers can we build um, well it's more African daisies what about like gardening oh wow we can build some cool hedges and things uh, nettle what does this look like oh this looks all right Uh huh. Yeah. Put in some of this nettle here. It looks pretty cool. Leave some room for some more flowers if we want. I'm going to push X and just kind of rotate this a little bit more precisely. Perfect. Ooh, we finished some research. More on the mandrill. Let me see. So what do we know now? We know about toy enrichment, our education is much better, and we've got even better enrichment for the mandrill. So that's perfect. What I think you should do when you start out, and what I'm planning on doing anyway, is just fully researching the animal that I've got. To learn as much as I can, to get the education rating. See, now you can see a little two on the screen, which means we are providing better information. So if I click on a person, um, they, they enjoy it. It says it has great scenery, the plants and stuff that I've been putting in. Um, their education rating might go up over time as they spend time here. We will see. I don't know. Um, all right. So now the zoo is looking pretty good, but I can do even better by just putting in some more um, fun stuff. Wow, this hedge is pretty sweet can i adjust how wide it is no not really um that's too bad my path is a little bit too wide for that to be cool but um i can just put in like some really outrageously well uh, manicured hedges like walls of hedges for people coming in just for fun Mm-hmm, push X, X, rotate this, and then X, and just move it forward. Yes. Amazing. And I'll just slide one over. I think that's all I'm going to do with that wall. I will put some over here as well to kind of match it. And then I think that's good. All right, so we're making money. Guests are coming in. Um, I wonder if it's time to get one more woman in this group. So I'm going to go to animal trading. I'm going to see if there's another female mandrill that are on the market that we can buy. We cannot get a man in here because um, that is not how the, the groups roll. It doesn't look like it right now. 
looks like um, a species. Let's just look for mandrills and see where they are. And zebras, sweet. Oh, expecting offspring. We're about to get a baby. All right, so we don't have to worry too much about it then because we're going to get a baby. But when a female does become available, we'll turn it on. All right. Oh, look, they're eating the burgers. Let's check in with them. Um, I hope the traffic home is okay. Hmm. It makes me cross when they don't tuck the staff facilities out of the way. Really? I thought I, thought I did a good job building um, the staff facilities in a place where... It, they were not negatively impacting. Let me look at the, the heat map for negative impact on guests. And yeah, I thought I did make it so that they weren't touching anything that people were doing. You know what? I bet they are affecting this toilet. And so what I'm going to do then is just take this facility and move it. And I'm just going to move it over here and tuck it away better. I'll follow their advice. I'm going to rotate it until it connects. I'm going to put that baby there. And then it still works, but now it um, there is no negative impact, really, for people who um, may be against this back wall of the bathroom. But I think that should be better. All right, so we're up to 12000 We're doing great, money-wise. Um I should probably cont continue just um, putting these nettles in. All right, and then maybe some more daisies. I think that looks really good. Nettles should be fine here. Let me just push XX and rotate this like this. That looks great. And then I think another one, you can, it's cool. You can just push X and then you can slide like another one out right next to where you built it. So you can easily um, kind of chain them. How'd that turn out? Does that look okay? Let me get in there. It's on the path a little bit. But not in a bad way. Um, I just want to, like, duplicate it. Yeah, so you can just kind of, like, give me some more of these. Perfect. Uh-huh. Yeah, look at this place. It's sweet. You know it. We got flowers everywhere. All right. So let's see what these people say. Um, this zoo feels pretty small. It is. It is. And I don't like to upgrade and build any more stuff until we get $20,000. So until then, um, I'm going to keep it as is. All right, everybody. I think we're in a great place here with this zoo and I'm going to take this time to freeze our progress and end the episode. So thank you so much for watching this Let's Play Planet Zoo franchise mode here in 2020. I really hope you are enjoying this series. If you like this video, I'd really appreciate it if you could subscribe to the channel. I will check you in the next video. I hope you have an excellent evening or day wherever you're at. Take care.